All right, welcome back to the lunch table, Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz. You already know where to hit that subscribe button, man. Shout out to my next guest, a rap legend, Ritz. What up, man? Yeah, yeah. What up, dude? No, you've been doing your thing for, I don't know, over a decade? Too something. long, man. Too Way long. too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been, yeah, I've been in the game. I got signed about 2012, but I've been rapping for... Way too long. Yeah, and I mean, you can wrap your ass off, man. Thanks, I mean, I remember just listening that to you like back in the day, and you can, st- and you know, to your new album now, put a crown on it. You're still doing the exact same shit. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. I try to stay, uh, you know, consistency is key. Yeah. You know, I'm just big on making sure my, uh, you know, it's up to my expectations mm-hmm. at least. What's kept you from not wanting to, let's say, you know, do do like the trap wave or do like the melodic shit too much? Because it's really difficult for artists to just keep to their own craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, sometimes you dabble. Sometimes I might dabble. But I think for me what happened was coming up in Atlanta, I chased so many trends. So, like, I started rapping when, around Outkast Goody Mob era. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and uh, the 90s. And then around 2000, Atlanta went through so many things. With, with one, taking over the game pretty much mm-hmm. uh, as far as running, you know, the t- being the tastemakers of what happened. So then... Little John with the crunk, then snap, then just all T. these. Ti with tr- the trap shit. Yeah, and then just so many trends. Outcasts doing their own thing. And then you know the auto tune and the futures, and then now it's came to where it's at with the SoundCloud stuff. So it's like I chased trends for so long that weren't that I had I had to learn the hard way that, and Atlanta's a good way to do it because you, you I was <laughs> I was at I was I was performing in the hood, you know. Yeah. So in the hood, it's not like where they're sitting there, yeah, put, putting their hands up. You know, it's just like you pretty much learn. Like I got on stage one night and tried to be crunk. In other words, uh, and it's people like, looking at you sideways, like, "What you doing, bro?" Well, just I, it just didn't feel. Even if they weren't, it didn't. It wasn't. Didn't feel comfortable. It wasn't mm-hmm. authentic. It wasn't me. And honestly, I didn't really. It didn't all click musically for me to get on until I finally started doing what I do and yeah. say, you know, fuck it. You know what I mean? And just just do me. So yeah, I, I don't. I try not to follow. Uh, I try not to follow uh, trends. Plus now it's just getting so ridiculous. It's, it's uh, I can't. It's weird because you don't want to sound like an old head, like 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 <laughs> like this and the this and the yeah. new stuff. So I understand it, right? But it's just uh, it's so much of the same exact sound. It's just very very hard to distinguish. Like it's just I don't know, man. I just wish there was a little bit more pockets of create uh, different rooms for other other lanes. You well, know? so then where does the space for somebody who just has straight bars and a lot of lyrical content fit in this microwavable era of music that we see today? It's a disappointing space. <laughs> 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 you pra- yeah, if you practice all that much to be good and have those bars, man, it's like it doesn't matter. It's like it does matter. I, I'm I'm a firm believer that if you try your hardest at perfecting your craft, if that's what you're into, if you want to be a good, skillful rapper and be known as the guy with the bars, you know, there's 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 a chance for you to to to, to get in there and make money. It's not mm-hmm. that easy, you know. But um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a weird climate right now. Um, uh, as as far as everything goes, but you know, I mean, you talk to people, it's it's a cool climate too. I mean, it's it's a lot of good music out there. It's just I just wish there was a little bit more pockets of different lanes. You know, this mm. the only time this this era reminds me of the most is back in like ninety two. Everybody from New York to down south, everybody was wearing West Coast flannels and mm-hmm. had the Dre whistles. Everybody did that same thing, um, you know, for a minute. So I never saw one sound take over that much until then. Everybody was doing a gangster rap. I mean, even yeah. Vanilla Ice put out a gangster rap <laughs> album. You know what I mean? So like, uh, now is the only time I'm seeing this, and now is the only time I'm seeing where it's such a difference. Where there was a wave of youth that came in, like teenagers. Yeah, so it's a lot of kid rap. So it's like a lot of stuff for kids, and and that is the majority. That's like ninety percent now. Well, you know, I, I was talking to somebody the other day explaining that. You know, a lot of the kids, let's say maybe like in between the ages of like 15 and 20, a lot of them are popping off. But the people who I, I'm 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people who I tend to listen to are at least above 30. Right, right, You know right, what I mean? And right. I think it actually does take a while for, let's say, these microwavable careers to actually become like a long-term career. Like people right. don't hit their peak or shouldn't hit their peak until they're about like 30 Yeah, or yeah, like you that. shouldn't, shouldn't. You know what I mean? You know, God bless the people that you know put out a record on the internet and blow up. You know, that's awesome, and it's cool that it's cool that this day and age allows that too at the same time. But uh, 
Yeah, man, it's it's, it's definitely crazy. Yeah. <laughs> definitely a crazy state. Well, you know, going back to you um, experimenting with like different sounds, right? So I'm from the Bay. Okay. So the one track that really stuck out to me just sonically was definitely Name Tattoo. Yeah, you got yeah, too yeah. short on the record, man. Yeah, but legend. you know, you, you've had records with like 40 in the past too. And yeah, you know, like, what, what's your relationship like with the Bay, man? Well, the thing is this, especially with Too Short, I mean, my love for rap music, period, started with uh, Rap A Lot Records and the Ghetto Boys. Yes. And then production-wise, and once I, st- I started getting into production and beats, I felt like Ant Banks and the Dangerous Crew had the dopest sound. Them and, um, oh, sh- man, I'm forgetting his damn name, E-40's producer that did the click and did uh, a studio tone. Studio tone and Ant Banks had the cleanest, tightest. I used to call it dope boy music. Because mm. we had these dope ass eight oh eight, and it just sounded like you ride around selling dope, selling keys and <laughs> shit. It was like it was like boom, 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 had that 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 West Coast slapping synth. in the trunk type shit. Yeah, slow, and it had the eight oh eight snare. It was just man, the the, the funk. It, they brought the funk without it being George Clinton funk. It was just mm. tight. It was tight sounding. Everything was in the pocket, nice, but it banged. It translated through down south. It didn't translate through up north that well, but that's what got me into Too Short and mm. that the West Coast uh, sound. So I always have a love for that. Yeah. Well, I think you know I, I've heard that like the the drug trade, the alleged drug trade the between like the trade, right? the Bay Area and Atlanta was like you know pretty heavy. Right. And, right. You know I I think that's where the ties between like Lil John and E Forty you know yeah. eventually came about because if the music just keeps on getting moved around between the states. Right. Well, I think too like you know Lil John probably grew up on that stuff too. So it's like or or, or was into that at that point in time. You know nineties and stuff like that and like. Uh, <clears throat> I also think I believe Pimp C said it, and this is what I tell producers that work on my albums. I to make a perfect down south beat for me, hmm. or a perfect beat for me is West Coast sense on a down south drum beat. So if you take the West Ooh. Coast sense, the boom 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 boom, you take that West Coast scent, but you put it on top of boom boom. Gotcha, got it. It's like a very weird. It changes up. The next thing you know, you got a funky down south beat. Yeah. So that's what my formula has always been. So I've always had a love for those West Coast scents, but on top of down south pat drum patterns. Even though Name Tattoo has the cap the, the yeah, West Coast. Yeah, it, it's a little yeah. bit, it, it's like at that 90 BPM range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where but, I always but, feel like you're rapping at like 180. Right, right, right. <laughs> but the, you know what? The 90 BPM range too was like one of my favorite eras in music when that, like around like the 50 Cent 2003, everybody was doing that kind of thing when uh, uh, Dre came out. Around 2001 to 2003, that was back. That tempo hit back pretty hard. I like the era a lot. That's when we yeah. get like the in the clubs and also like yeah, the, nothing ex- but a G things and all that. Exactly. Ex- ex- or the or the part two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you know, I, I'm listening to your album, uh, put a crown on it, and yeah, I, I love it because there are so many different topics that you touch on, and you know, rappers nowadays don't necessarily touch on these things. Right. Right. I think one thing that I've always been keen about talking about is a uh, political correctness. Right. Yeah. And you know, like I, I, I'll shit you not, I was literally like in my bed listening to this shit, and then I heard you talking about, man, I can't say this, I can't say that, and the first thing that came out my mind was like, okay, he's about to talk about political correct shit. Right. Knowing that, the, and I didn't even know that was the name the of the title. track. And so, you know, it, it reminded me about why people just don't like listening to Dave Chappelle, for example. Yeah. The guy yeah. who just keeps it, like, extremely real. And, you know, I, I just wanted to know, like, more about your stance on this very PC world that we live in. Hey, right you know, I tried, I tried to say, and it's funny you say Chappelle because I'm not that big of a rapper, so it doesn't really translate or compare. But when I, I, I wrote Politically Correct and recorded it, and I saw it special, and I was like, ah, oh, it's basically the same kind of thing. <laughs> But it all, so I was like, it looks like I saw the Chappelle special and went yeah. and did the rap version. That's cool, whatever. It, that didn't happen. But it was also refreshing to see that. So I'm like, oh, I'm not the only one feeling it's time to really speak up because it's getting ridiculous. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, somebody asked me uh, about the record and was like, I, I was doing an Australian interview, an interview with some guys in Australia mm-hmm. for a radio show. And they were like, uh, what would you do for a video for Asian Fusion, man? You know? And I was like, I don't know, probably have some Asian girls and some geishas eating, some, <laughs> eating a taco and maybe some noodles. And I was like, but wait a minute, am I going to get in trouble for saying that? You know, something that small these days. Yeah, people can just blow it up. People can be like, yo, why do all Asian people got to be in this? Or why do you know why you got to have tacos and noodles? Like, just the dumb, it's like, yo, it just, it's really getting to be too eggshelly. And what bothers me about it, the main reason I wanted to write about it was because we can complain about something like that, but then you see kids crying on 
on TV because they're separated from their parents because they got a wall built up. You got little Mexican kids mm. crying and doing all that. You you could show that all day, talk about that all day, but I can't I can't say I can't say damn dude you're retarded. I can't say that word. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just, not that I think saying the word retarded is right. I'm just saying I think it's a little bit backwards. Like, yo, maybe we should be worried about Well, some... we should be focusing on, like, the bigger picture. Yeah, not I mean, we got, these... a, we got a president that's, I mean, not to get that political about it, but, I mean, let's just think about it. And this is no, no dis to the I mean, Trump supporters. Let me just say, or... even going back to the song, you were saying we can't talk about religion. We can't even talk about politics without can't somebody getting, like, it. fired up. I mean, I can't even say. I mean, even in a good, even in a positive light. I mean, you're gonna catch it either way. It's almost like it's to the point where, hey, that song, you know, where you're talking about praying and stuff and how God saved your life. That might be. It's like, whoa, I can't say that. You know, even though that didn't happen. I'm just using yeah, an yeah, example. Yeah. You know, it's just it, it irritates me a little bit. I think it's a little bit backwards the way we're living like right now. You but know? I think it. But I think the good music <laughs> in this world really pushes those boundaries and talks about these topics that we're not so keen to. I, I will say, though, listening to Politically Correct, when when you did use the C word a couple times, I'm just like, whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know I, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you use that, like, for me per, for me personally, yeah. that's not a word, like, in my vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I could see where you're coming from, where you're just like, you know, if it's already stemmed in your roots. Yeah, And yeah. It's, if it's just how you feel, then that's how you feel. I mean, yeah. And, I mean, the thing is, if you're raised up, and, you know, a lot of people hate that word, and that's why I said it. I should have said moist. Moisture, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> moisture in the oyster, but uh, but nah, I should have said that. But yeah, some people don't like that word. But it's like, do you mind if I say it? Like, I mean, am I not like unless I call like your girlfriend or somebody's mother or like all women of this and like if it's very directional? Yeah, I mean, if I said a word, I mean, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of British. My wife's British. They just call you old cunt, you old, you know. This guy quit acting like a cunt. Playful, you know. It's just yeah, it, it yeah. could be. But it's it's got a stigma, so I, I understand that. But it's like, can I say it and still have a career, please? Like, yeah. is that a, like, is it that bad? I understand. Like, certain words you can't say. When it comes to the racial shit, man, like you should leave that shit alone, especially. From, That's something you'll never say. No, and I and I really don't even like to talk about it because it's none of my business, yeah. and, and it's like it's not not none of my business. It's something that. I could be challenged that I can't I can't identify with. I was born white, I'm white, it is what it is. So I'm not gonna touch that. You know what I'm saying? And you shouldn't say that word and you and however you wanted to say it, you know, however you say it. But I, I said that there too, you know, you can't say the N-word either, but unless you got some friends that okay it if you say it with the A on the mm-hmm. end. And it's like that's lame too. But uh it's just crazy, man. But you could let but you got tons of people online getting away with saying that. With the A on the end, a bunch of little white kids on the video. Yeah, my, this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. But like you said, you you you're t- we're talking about the word cunt. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, first <laughs> porno I seen when I was eight was my dad's a porno collection. I was like, oh, what a big cunt! Like, I didn't think of it as a bad word. It's like cunt was pussy shit. <laughs> I, I do want to leave it on like one or two. Notes, Maybe that so. should be your taboo a, thing now when you're having sex. Like you use the word you hate to oh, use. Hell like, no, nah, bro. I'm going in that cunt. See, see, all I know, all I know is when I was listening to the record, that word stuck out, and I'm like, yo, now, that, that's how I know it's something that I'm personally not going to be using. Now every time you hear it, you're just going to think of a vagina. Yeah, no. Nah, well, every time I, I hear the word now, I might just be thinking of you. Like, God damn it, Ritz, right, you got this word right. stuck in my head now. Good, 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 good. good. Two things. One, <laughs> my favorite movie of all time is uh, Waterboy. Dope. You know what I mean? Dope. Solid. Uh, Waterboy's great movie. A movie that will not, that would probably be banned uh, in this day and age. And number two, I can't believe you don't like Breaking Bad. No, I don't like Breaking Bad. No, <sighs> I don't. I don't. I did. So here's the deal with Breaking Bad. God damn it. One, everybody, ex- <laughs> one, everybody expects me to like Breaking Bad, so that makes you like... From the jump, like, you know, yes. already defend. Like, when it first comes out, yo, Ritz, you love Breaking Bad. So you already kind of get that thing. You know, it's like somebody tells you a movie's great. You're like, they don't know me. Yeah. You know. But once I gave Breaking Bad a try, I, bad acting actually didn't go with the Breaking Bad part. It just kind of, I can't stand bad acting. And then, um, but Breaking Bad, I, I just, hey, let's be honest, I do meth. I did meth. For a long time, it just didn't look like real meth to me, and it mm. didn't seem like the the real game to me. Okay. Now so I know some meth, some heavy hitters in the meth game that uh love that show and they identify with it, but that shit just didn't resonate as real to me. It looked fake as shit. Yeah. So I just didn't. Yeah, it just didn't. It just didn't seem authentic to the methamphetamine world that I've lived mm. in. 
I guess, too unrealistic for your uh, realistic standards. Exactly. Now, okay. the movie Spun is more more right on. Than, Spun? Yeah, check out Spun. Mm-hmm. Spun is more more closer to the real experience than Breaking Bad for me. Yeah. But, you know, there's going to be some people out there that be like, yo, Breaking Bad is just what? Maybe you guys are big. Maybe you guys are moving a little too much speed around. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you, you're over here like uh, exploding buildings with some like quote unquote meth now. But then again, though, same thing, though, with that song, I wanted to kind of say like, you know, certain things you're not allowed to just like pretty much everybody likes Breaking Bad. So it's like, yeah, you know, a lot of mostly everybody likes sports. I, I just wanted to say things that, you know, you're not allowed to say, you know, most man, I've. I dissed the Rolling Stones before in front of some people, and they get mad, man. Yeah. Like, you're not allowed to say it. Like, Well, isn't it crazy how in this world we live in, you have to say something outrageous in order to get someone's attention? Kind of, yeah, you do. You do. I mean, and, and on the flip side of that coin, my manager didn't even want me to put politically correct on the album. <sighs> he was like, why would you want to bring that? on anyway like why would you want that negativity and i understood that why you know if my career is just kind of starting is getting back you know getting a nice fresh start Mm -hmm. and i'm in a very good space so it's just like why would you want that and it's like well i want it that's the exact reason why i want it because i'm a writer and i wrote what was on my mind i want to put it out yeah why do i have to worry about what everybody thinks unless i'm being totally disrespectful and way out of line yeah. And I totally understand that. And I don't want to do that anyway, because I don't want to hurt nobody. No, nah, I mean, I, I think you were just at the point of just like, look, we should be able to say whatever we want to say within good reason. Yeah, man. It was just getting out of control. It was like, uh, it's just, you know, things I'd comment back to people or just say something online. The things that I would get like, you know. I'm sure ridic- you've like, you probably gotten like death threats over that song, huh? No, nah, actually, no. That's, <laughs> oh, what, no. that's what we were worried about. Huh. Like a lot of bad things like that. We thought it would really strike a lot of, you know, you know, strike a lot of people the wrong way. But I've gotten, you know, I, I, I've gotten past the point where I don't read every comment anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like just kill my self esteem every morning. Yeah. But, uh, but nah, man, I've gotten actually, I think it's in the air. People are a little bit tired of this shit, man. You know what I mean? Like just, just a little bit, you know, just. You should be able to just lighten up a little bit, especially with all the dark stuff, the bad stuff that happens that everybody talks about all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got. I mean, I watch World Star every day. I'm a World Star watcher, and um, you know, you get your you see it sitting people, you, you know, people getting punched in the mouth, mm-hmm. and I don't know about you, but when I see people get punched in the mouth, I'm just automatically thinking negative and fighting and just violence, and you know, it's okay to do that, but you can't say like. An opinion on something? I mean, it's just crazy. I get you. I mean, there was even a video surfacing up today where WAC 100 got uh, beat up by Nipsey's bodyguard. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't for, see that. for all his like Nipsey comments and whatnot. I haven't seen the video per se, yeah. but the video is like somewhere floating around the internet. Yeah. And you know, to my to my thinking, I'm just like, wow, like we're we're all looking at this like somebody getting like knocked yeah. is all right. I, you know, I, I'm not speaking for whether it was white right or it was wrong, but right. like. We distract ourselves from like the bigger picture by going even deeper into like smaller groups. Like he can't say the c word, for example. Yeah, or, you yeah. know, he can't say the r word or the n word. Yeah, you know the, what I the mean? Worst, like, the worst, the worst thing for me, like, uh, um, and that's just, that that goes back to what I was saying before. It's just like, like, yeah, you can't. I mean, to not be able to say, you know, it's con- since since I was born in 1980. People have been saying, dude, stop acting like a retard. Oh, dude, that's retarded. Dude, you're going retarded. You know what I'm saying? And trust me, I have fans that have mental retardation issues or health issues or, mm-hmm. or things like it's not it's not to cut them down. It's just like you can't say certain things, but like people are cheering for little kids getting separated from their parents and stuff on the news, but I can't say a word. It's just it's backwards to me, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, in the words of someone who I will not reference, uh, see you next Tuesday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Now I'm going to think of you every time I hear that song. <laughs> well, but I'll tell I, you. I, I forgot. I probably got... Hey, I probably, uh, oh, go ahead. Go. Our, our, our mutual friend has been using that phrase for a minute. Oh, for... You, you know what I mean? Oh, you know yeah, who I'm talking yeah, about? yeah. Shout out to our mutual friend. He's yeah. a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, you. Man. Shout out, you know, sh- shout him out, man. Uh, <laughs> Go bootleg my CD. Damn. <laughs> that's my dog, man. I love that guy. Oh, fuck, man. That's, uh, funny. that's funny. Um, <coughs> but yeah, I might have got off the subject of whatever yeah, happened no, with Wack. I have it's to check good. out that video about Wack. I um don't 
I don't know that this has nothing to do with whatever he's commenting about Nipsey Hussle at all. I, nothing, none of my business have no opinion on that. I will say WAC 100, though, is, is pretty pretty honest online. And sometimes I, I respect, I don't, not, not about what he said about Nipsey. I'm just saying I respect honesty on uh, mm-hmm. from some people these days because it's very rare because you got to watch what you say and curve around, you know? Well, that's why, you know, again, the people who, I guess, acquire the most attention are just being as honest as possible about their opinion. Like, that's what you would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the same way how LeVar Ball, a couple of years ago, he was just getting all this noise for, like, his kids and his big baller brand. It's right. just like, you know, like, what the guy is saying is, is extremely outrageous. Right. But he's being completely honest about where he's coming from. And right. it's like, that's something that people like ourselves can really appreciate. It's yeah, like, man. do I agree with him? No. But do I appreciate the honesty? 100%. Right, right. So, I, I respect it as well. That's that, man. Um, you know, you obviously not liking Breaking Bad for what it is. Like, <laughs> I, I do got to ask just from, you know, my personal perspective, but like, how and when did you like get into uh, meth? Uh, meth hit Georgia around two, th- I mean, well, before it was crank. So like crank, uh, I, I started doing that at like 97, 98, just here and there. Um, I've never been a big full on like, Pal's a dope drug addict, lost his mind. I've always had good parents that, that you know, make me feel guilty. So, like, mm-hmm. I've always had to hide it, in other words. So I always have friends that, you know, live wild. You go over to their house, their parents are doing drugs with them. I didn't have parents like that. So, like, that kept me to where I'm probably not dead. You know, I didn't die. So, like, I, uh, you know, I limited it out and had to, you know, when my pops wasn't around for a while, I was able to go a little bit wilder. But, you know. I always I was lucky enough to have a good family to be contained. Mm-hmm. But so I don't want to get it twisted like y'all been doing meth since 1997, you know what I'm saying? Like like that. But I started I started dabbling in crank around not in the late 90s. And then ice hit uh Georgia real hard around 2001 hmm. and they really started cracking down with their own ice department around 2003, 2004. And then it kind of disappeared for a while and you had the X pill era and then um and then it came back. Uh, now it's back a little bit. Um, but yeah, it really hit like in a major, major way in the early 2000s. So around that point in time, it got so bad to where I just couldn't write raps. Put this way, I watched the whole Iraq war on TV, didn't go to sleep. I think Holy I was shit. like, I mean, I went to sleep every five days or something, you know, but I just was so fixated and obsessed with the war. I'd be all geeked up listening to Arab, Arabic music, just ready to just figure out what's happening. And, um, you know, just fucking out of my mind on yeah. ice and writing raps. Um, you know, they say people tweak on things when they do speed. So some people work on cars. Some people would polish this whole room. Yeah. You know, some people would rebuild their computer. My thing is I don't like doing speed for leisurely thing. I only do it to write raps. Mm. So it got to the point where I relied on it to write raps. Got gotcha. you. Where it would take me six hours to write a rap sober. It would take me two hours to write a rap on meth. So I could write three songs in one night as opposed to one song in two days or three days. So I was just pumping out records, pumping out records. And then when it was finally time to stop around 2006, uh, I was just tired of like, you know, just doing the legal shit, worried about going to jail and worried Mm -hmm. about shit like that. So I was like, you know, I mean, unless somebody's bringing some shit to my house, I'm done doing or meeting up with people doing drug deals because I got to be a rapper because I'm getting old here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm 26. So I stopped doing that, and I had to retrain myself to write without meth, and uh, that took a long time. That must have been difficult, huh? Because you were like so reliant on it. So for a reliant, long time. yeah. Because as soon as you do one, it's like all right, psh, drop the beat, and you without it, you would rather do anything else but write a rap. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like God, it's the last thing I want to do. Or so God, I wish I had a line right now. And um, so I got over that, and uh, and then I dabbled. I dabbled in through the years. In and out, you know, th- for the last so over many yeah. years, yeah. So you know, I guess I want to ask you, um, how did you get out of it as much as you could? You know, I know you ended up dabbling like, uh, you know, a few times here and there after you, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, officially got out. But you know, the reason why I bring this up is because just recently we had lost Juice World to yeah a whole bunch of drug shit, and you know, I, I think there's a conversation that we have to have in regards to like drug abuse and mental health while simultaneously being in this music industry. Yeah, I mean, dude, I I'm sober now. This is my this is my first sober press run and um 
Thank you. Congrats, man. man. Thank you, man. That's yeah. a beautiful name. Normally, I have a bottle in my pocket, man, and I, I, <laughs> I, I feel a lot better. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, what was your question, though, about the drugs? As far I guess, as like, how, how, did you, um, how did you get yourself out of the situation from being yeah. a frequent meth user? So, so, the meth, so the meth thing was weird because it was like it was meth and cocaine user. So I'm just a, I'm just a frequent drug user, yeah. basically. So um, it wasn't like like a lot of people get it wrong and think, oh, he's a meth head. It was like, nah, I wasn't one of them. Like I, you know, I just do speed to write. I do coke when I get drunk, and I get drunk all the time. So um, for me, and this is what I tell people now, because this my sobriety thing. I have a lot of people hitting me up until you're ready. Like and 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 that's the hardest part because so many people. The the main thing that human beings have trouble with is being honest with themselves. Yeah, right? about themselves. So. Until you're honestly ready to like give it up all the way, then you're not gonna be ready. It's just gonna lead to a bunch of relapses and that. I mean, you yeah. have to. For me, it took a near death experience and and a um, a lot of things. It took. I lost all my money. I lost almost lost my wife. Almost lost everything. Almost lost my management, which I would have maybe lose my career. People wanted to stop working with me. Lost my sense of uh, reality as far as uh, being suicidal and homicidal. And um, was just like, I'm either going to die this year or someone's going to kill me this year. And I'm going to lose my wife and not have a career. And I'm, I don't have any money. All my credit's gone. So, like, it's, I'm fucked. Like, so I can either be an idiot and continue this way and just, you know, get, get ready to, you know, I know what's going to happen or go. So I, I really don't know what to say, man. I just, I hope that uh, some of these people can wake up and uh, make that change, but until you really know, I think for me it was uh, it was several tours. It was just I toured so much and several tours, just not knowing if I'm gonna make it home, mm. being alive. Cause so I I got to the point where I was making my wife watch me Facetime while I sleep to make sure I keep breathing and just stuff like that. Cause I hadn't been asleep shit. and just yeah, just just bad yeah. shit. So it's very hard, man. It just yeah, it just sounds like a, an accumulation of a whole bunch of shit between like you know you touring your wife, always in this constant worry of state. You yeah. personally always in this constant worry of state. Like, am and I gonna? She's make at home it? doing the same thing. So like, it was just a mess. So like, <laughs> but with the, with the situation with these other rappers and just artists in general, we get this uh, sense that we're uh, we get this sense that we're special because. A lot of times we're in a tour bus or a van or whatever, and you pull up to a state, state, your bus gets to park on the curb, you walk in, it's like, where does Mr. So-and-so go? You're special. Mm -hmm. You know, you're always special. You live in this little tube, and your drugs are free, and you're partying, and you're the, you're the night, everybody's paid to come see you, be their entertainment for the night. So you get this false sense of reality. Like, I remember when I got home from tour one time, and I went to the grocery store and just parked my van on the curb, like, nah, I'm cool. Cause that's what I do on tour. It's like, oh, yo, Ritz is in the van. Like I'm somebody special. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You get this false sense, and that false sense leads to shit. I can, I can do whatever the I fuck. I can do whatever, man. I'm me. At one point, you probably just feel like you're invincible. Yeah, you do. It's, it it gives you that invincible state, and that's even on my level. I can't imagine some of these really big artists that are riding around three, four tour buses, got hits on the radio. Everybody catering mm -hmm. to them. You get catered to yourself on a certain level. On my level. And I'm struggling, you know? I mean, people don't know that, but I'm saying, like, you know, I can't imagine if I was, like, you know, a, a huge star with four tour buses coming in and you got all the money in the world and you're 20, in your 20s. Man, Damn, and, man. And, and, you're a and you're into drugs and you're into, and partying's your thing. That sounds like a warning, everybody. It, like, it, it really I mean, it, it really is. I mean, to be honest, I haven't met too many people that can um, drink with me, and uh, and that's not a bragging thing. It's just, it just... The more you do it, it's just like the saying. I say that because there's a lot of people out there probably don't can't be as many people that take as many perks or take as many or you know drink as much lean. You know you you got to be the biggest one in the room if you're the artist. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You got to be the baddest one. And it's like, uh, yeah, man, it, there's not a lot of future in it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like the societal pressure, like not only from the people outside your group, but even like within your camp. I was literally just having a conversation with somebody at the coffee shop down there. Mm -hmm. And they were basically relaying a story to me about Mac Miller mm. and his camp, about how like you you know maybe maybe like in certain situations like they would see Mac just already like phased out, right? And just be like, no, no, he's cool. But yeah. it's like you know if we look at these situations and recognize like, hey, like. 
this shit really isn't cool and it's not yeah. for the sake of like his artistry or even his like personal beneficial health. It's yeah. like like what are we really doing here? Well, that's what happened to me too. It's like everyone knew I had a dangerous problem and was pretty fucking you know, sad to be around me, you know, like they probably hated, you know, now afterwards I know how they felt, but, you know, hated to see me be in that situation, but couldn't do anything. I'm writing records. I'm doing the shows. My health is horrible and I'm drinking and getting crazy, but I'm still handling myself. So the people that are around you that are supposed to help, they're just letting you do you because, you, mm. you know, you're looking like you handle it, you know, so you never know when that switch is going to go from handling it to death or jail with me, what made me, I started to get extremely violent. And the violence came from my problems at home and just lifestyle. And the, the violence is, uh, is what led me to go get help, mm. the violent side. Because I'm not a naturally violent person. I'm a really shit kind individual. I really got a good heart. But I started getting really dark and wanting to go to dark places. In it, and that's what led, led me there. Got but you. people around you don't realize that's happening. Wow. Until it happens, and then they're all like, whoa, you know, this is bad. And then it gets bad and bad and bad, and then people stop wanting to work with you. Yeah. yeah. It seems like for you, like, it just got to that point where you honestly looked in the mirror and didn't even recognize, like, why am I being this violent person that I am naturally am not? Yeah, well, I was just so sad. I mean, me and my wife were just so sad at home and mm -hmm. and dealing with... Uh, Dealing with home, uh, friends situations, you know, street kind of situations, mm -hmm. and dealing with, uh, you know, just sad, sad. When you're sad at home, when you go out on the road and pour a bunch of liquor on it, and then add social media and add being a rapper, all that is a recipe oh, for disaster. God. So, yeah, mine was more like uh, got suicidal because I just didn't really, I wasn't happy anymore, mm -hmm. and then I just got obsessed with like maybe taking somebody with me. And then when that happened, it was just like, okay, this is dumb. This is, I got to go. Yeah. And no matter, I'll spend my last dollar to go, you know, to get help. Because it was, you know, it, it's crazy. I, I never imagined I'd do it. So I, I hope everybody out there, that, you know, I hope some people get a lesson from it. Some people can party and not go that route. But, you know, you got to watch, you know, be honest with yourself. If, it, if it's making you miserable and sad, stop. Mm -hmm. If you're having fun partying, you wake up with a hangover, you can handle it. Do your thing by all means. Go to the doctor, check your health, you know, make sure you're not, make sure your liver's okay. But, you know, if you're miserable from drinking and partying, if it makes you sad, like, if you start thinking depressing stuff, like, probably should stop. Because yeah. life's a lot, like, there's a, there's a brighter side of life for sure. Yeah. I didn't. Coming from me, I'm Mr. Dark. Like, yeah, you know what <laughs> I mean? It's, I'm super bright right now. It feels amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you've been able to uh, be sober for this uh Press run. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah, it, thanks, it's a big man. thing, man. It really is yeah, a big it thing. It really is. It really is. I'm not, but I'm slowly getting used to stuff like this. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. know how to talk to anybody without just having a little buzz first. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, fortunately, I didn't bring the liquor out or anything. Nor normally, I'll have people who just want, hey, let's take a shot that, before the I'm like, yeah, look, yeah, man, yeah. whatever, whatever makes you comfortable. That's, but. Me, that's me, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, one other song that I really gravitated towards on the project was a fake smile. Yeah. Yeah. For the fact that, you literally repeated the same three topics in every single verse, just to kind of reiterate your point. Right, right, between, right. Between um, you know, the the drug abuse, your relationship with your wife, and you know, the your music. relationship with strange music and whatnot. Right. Um, so, I literally just watched your interview with Kev from like maybe two years ago, yeah. and you were discussing like the situation that was happening with a uh, strange, but. Yeah. I think after listening to Fake Smile, I feel like there was may possibly something a little bit more, like a kind of like a rift in like the friendship between like... Yeah, well, here's the deal. And this is what I... I think record label and artists are never supposed to like... You know, they, they don't have... They have each other's interest. I mean, the, the label has... The label wants to get what they can out of the artist. The artist wants to get what they can out of the label. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, the artist label relationship deep down inside is never that great. You mm. know, that, that I mean, it's business, man. It's a contract and it's a job. It's like, I mean, it is what it is. I say that to say this. So whatever I, my fans and, and me personally, I'm known for writing personal stuff. So I write about my personal experiences. So I have to walk a fine line between where I don't want to throw strange music under the bus or diss strange music because I love those guys. Travis Oakland, Tech Nine. But as an artist and label, you're always going to have riffs, you know? Mm. And I think um, 
it was my first deal and I got a pretty, I got to see how it works, you know, mm-hmm. and that was a, it was a lot of disappointment and not in strange music in the industry, how it works, mm, you know, okay, okay. Um, in the industry, just how it works. It's just kind of disappointed how, how, how it can work, you know, and, um, and, and not disappointed in strange. It did so much for me. And it's just disappointing just how the business is structured and uh, what I didn't know about it. And there were some riffs. I, you know, I made a mistake, uh, you know, being vocal about some stuff that I really should have just had a one-on-one discussion. That's why I said I, I threw a sucker punch even though we touched gloves. Mm. I shouldn't have did that because I thought the whole, I felt like the whole fight was rigged, meaning I felt like I was rigged. You lost from the jump. Yeah, I was, I was already lost from the jump. Yeah, it was already not meant for me to win this fight anyway. So I threw a sucker punch. And I sh- and I, and I was bitter, and I never should have reignited shit because I got nothing but respect deep inside mm. for tech, and that's what I said in that. And um, fake smile too, you know. I've addressed so many of those topics on so many other records. I have a song on last call called Good Life. It was an extra song, a bonus record that a lot of people didn't hear. I'm a hoping a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to my wife and um, certain things in that song. I hope I'll never have to touch again because I've yeah. touched so many times. I'm hoping fake smile is the last chapter of that. Mm-hmm. And now, if I'm pissed off at the label, I'm just gonna be pissed at myself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now you're your nah, own label. Right, 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 right. right, right, right. <laughs> now, nah, but shout to Strange Music, Tech Nine, Travis O'Gwen, man, I love those guys to death. Yeah, but you know, with a record label, man, to attention all rappers, it's a motherfucker with it with a deal, man. It's just it is what it is. I mean, it, it, you know, I gotta put to me straight. A record label is like a bank. You yeah. know, they they put the, put up the money they for give you. The loan. You gotta pay the bank back. Yeah. Except they can. Um, they could say your video cost twenty thousand dollars and it only cost five. What are, what are you going to do? Yeah. Audit them and then you audit them. You're not friends with them anymore. So it's like it's a very tricky business. You know what I'm saying? So uh, so you know I'm surprised that you decided to operate under your own label clientele now. So then like yeah, what? C and T. I got a C and assist on clientele, oh. but client oh, so now clientele is the crew. Um, C and T Records. Yeah, C and T. Yeah, shout to C and T Records. Yeah, yeah. So like what what are like some uh, business practices that you employ that you see as beneficial? Well, right now, to be honest, man, I haven't really because I, I literally got out of the rehab facility, signed a deal, um, wrote an album, recorded it, and came on the road. And now I'm here. Now so we're like, here. So like, I think <laughs> I think six months from now, once I start seeing like checks and I start being able to get a street team together and staff together and... I mean, I literally emptied out my trailer myself and just counted all my merch and put it up in my garage. I mean, I'm at that stage, you know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, and just being real, that's how it starts. And um, that's how it starts if you don't have a bunch of money behind you. And uh, and I don't. The money that we have is just money that, that we got with with the deal, with the budget uh, from 1RPM. And uh, now we just wait for some wait for some return and, and, and expand the label, C&T. And um, I really can't wait, man. You know, it's been... Since two, it's same thing. Back to the whole record deal thing, and once again, this is not a diss to strange music, but you got to think when I signed a record deal in 2012, I was getting millions of views on videos in 2011. When I signed on my own YouTube page, hmm. when I signed in 2012, strange music gets all that that strange music's uh, mm, views. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't received a YouTube check or gotten paid off my name since 2012. So. There's a lot of big things Shit. in the way for me, yeah. yeah. And so those things alone can make you bitter to any label, yeah. you know. Any, you know. What but I'm but that's not necessarily directed towards strange. It, you're kind of just like exactly. directing your energy toward the situation. Unfortunately, in then that's what I'm saying. Unfortunately, the way I write, I like to explain. I like other artists, especially. I like to because I've always been known as the up and coming artist. It took a while. I like to give those guys some insight, and unfortunately, that insight sometimes comes off as me bashing strange when it's just giving them insight on how this works, how yeah. this whole thing works. Well, you're also trying to figure out how to say everything in 16 bars. Yeah. This time around, you tried to say everything in 48 bars. Right, right, right. <laughs> and be politically correct. And be politically same. correct at the fucking same time, man. Right, right, right. Oh, man. Well, <coughs> Ritz, man, I, I really enjoy this conversation. I think you have a yeah, lot man, of uh, you, you know bro. gems to uh, share with the people. But let's get into some very like just chill shit. Now. Yeah, yeah, so, let's you know, do it. Obviously, we're at the lunch table. So, what's your favorite food, man? That's hard. Okay, so that's hard because I'm a foodie, right? So uh-huh. I love everything. There's only like a couple foods I don't like. Um, 
I'm gonna say, you know, I was talking to my wife about it because I love so much. She's always like, you, you look like you smell like mustard, like you like meat. You love. look like you smell yeah, like yeah, mustard. Yeah, yeah, you look like you smell like wow. mustard. I'm like, God damn, <laughs> it's terrible. I look like a mustard guy with mustard hands and right. meat, meatloaf face. I do love a meatloaf, but yeah, when it comes down to it, I mean, a regular El Pastor street taco oh. with some tomatillo salsa. There we go. Um, man, some radish, some lime, maybe a little queso fresco. Oh, man, it's my favorite. Street taco, Mexican street tacos are my favorite food, period. I, I can't turn them down. I, I had to say, like, if you had a meatball truck, a place that serves some kind of lamb, because I'm a sucker for lamb and duck, Ooh. or if you had a um, taco stand, which one am I doing? And I think, uh, or a lobster roll thing, too. That's a, but I mean, I think you, could, you could also have the lobster tacos, man. You can have the lobster tacos. You can <laughs> and that sounds like the perfect combination for you in particular. And, and a lobster taco <laughs> is a delicious thing, too. So, But yeah, I think tacos is probably my favorite food. Okay. Yeah. Uh, name tattoo. What, what was the first tattoo that you got? And then first, I have a follow-up question after that. First tattoo <laughs> I got is a name tattoo. Ooh. And it's, it's, it's still on my arm. It's terrorist. Johnny. And it looks and it got done with a needle with an eraser on the end of it, just with one poke at a time. What the just, hell? My homie had just got out of jail. I got it when I was fifteen. So it's like all crooked and it's got like a little messed up shamrock underneath it. By far the most painful. So that was the most painful. This little tattoo right up here that I'm embarrassed <laughs> to show everybody. <laughs> that's showing off this farmer tan and these muscles I got. Yeah, this is the first one. That that hurt. I got it. I was sitting outside an apartment complex. And just getting it, just and it, you know they put the eraser on the end and the needle, and it just eesh. took about maybe five hours, something like that. And five hours for that thing? For that, well, man. I'm 15 years old too. I don't. But you gotta that. think it's one needle, so you gotta hit one hole with your hand because you know a gun's going. Yeah. You're just going. Oh. Bing, boom, 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 boom. So it's like extremely slow. Oh to get it done. man, it takes Damn, forever man, to do crazy. all that black in there with one little needle. I mean, now there's some guys in jail. I'm sure they can probably, you know, probably got it down, but. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. This this was just a hand. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Is name tattoo based off a true story too? You got people with your name on their. Uh... I have a lot of people with my name on a tattooed on them, but and you know that was a thing I thought about having that because I, I, I got the beat from Drum Dummy. I was like, yo, I need a beat like too short. This kind of West Coast kind of beat. I think I sent him some stuff. Either way, he nailed it. And um, what I didn't want to do is make my fans that got Ritz tattooed on them seem like they were suckers for doing that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because yeah, I got yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, yeah. of fans of Ritz tattoos on them. The name tattoo was more like, you know, when you're with a girl and she like, like you go to have sex with her and you pull down her panties and she's got like Jerome by her pussy and got shit. And you. you're like, oh man, I don't want to come on Jerome. You get super quick. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, the, like this little Johnny tattoo will be on her ass and shit. You're like, man, fuck Johnny. This yeah, fuck Johnny, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna come on, Johnny. <laughs> Reds, uh, do you have any music videos coming up for uh, Put a Crown on It? I do, man. I, I shot a video for, well, I got the video for Twin Lakes out right now, and I shot a video for Politically Correct. Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's dope, man. You know, uh, I got to dress up in all these characters, dude. So, like, I'm really excited to see this. Shout out to Ed Pryor. He shot both videos. Um, dude, so I dressed up. So I don't want to spoil it too much, but, yeah, yeah. but it's cool to get. So I dressed up like a gothic guy. So I got to wear like this is gonna be hilarious. I got to wear like the little net bands and like like little spikes. Just wearing all black. You got makeup, makeup. on your face yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, got to do all that. I got to dress up like a skater, whichever kind of looked like I normally. Which I, I was about to say, I bro. I didn't realize how much <laughs> as that skater. I didn't. I was looking for something different, but either way, dressed up like a skater. And that, that was fun. I got to wear some Vans, and I was like, yo, bro. And like, Fuck so then it. you just lied on your album then. You said you never wore Vans. I did for the first time. Okay. First time. I wore I wore Vans in the video, man. It was, it was fun. <laughs> I, I did the skater look. I did a redneck look. I did a police officer. I did Trump. I did a Whoa. pilot. I did. Man, I got... Whoa. Oh, I did this dorky, uh, dorky old white dude. Uh, I wanted to get like the dorky guy talking about... Uh, the pussy hole so stretched out, I don't feel shit, but like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of characters. I can't wait to see uh, how this video comes Yo, this out. music video sounds like it's legitimately going to be legendary. Yeah, it should, I hope so, because the song was so, like, I was worried about it being touchy, so I was like, yo, let's kind of make fun of myself. Let's dress up in, like, some of these topics. Like, like in the song, like, uh, let's say, uh, like, uh, I don't know. But the imprisonment of Mes innocent Mexican children is cool because they didn't have a green card. So say that line. I might be like Trump in there. The imprisonment of innocent Mexican children is cool. You know what I'm saying? And then switch to shit. So yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it's cool, man. Oh, my God. 
That's cool. Yeah, you got yeah, you yeah. definitely have to send me that music video <laughs> once it's out, bro. I can't wait to see. Yeah, that I, shit. I I can't wait to see it too. I'm excited to see what he does with it, man. Have a redneck dude in there talking about Bill Cosby's being innocent and shit. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, you know, shout out to everybody in this political correctness world type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Watch your mouth. Watch what you say. Shout dude. out to Ritz too, Same man. Thing. Also, shout out to C N T E N T. You yeah, dig? Yeah, man. C N T E N T. Where can everybody Ruckers find you, Ritz? Uh, you can find me. Uh, Instagram Ritz, uh, Ritz Music. Please subscribe to my YouTube, Ritz Music. You can see all my music videos there, all my content, my cooking show, Starving Artists. Ooh. You can find me at The Real Ritz on Twitter, Ritz on Facebook, and Body by Ritz if you're looking to get some muscles. Body I'm, by Ritz? I'm oh, just, shit. Yeah, I'm just kidding. That's where, you eat, that's, that's where you eat every taco in the world and you get this body right there. There we go. This is the lunch table, food for thought. I'm Nico Blitz. Shout out to my special guest, Ritz, and we are out, everybody. Nico Blitz and Ritz and this bitch. Ooh, that sounds like a tag. Hold up. <laughs>